Hi everyone, I'm Julia Tanner, I'm an artist living on the Isle of Wight. Today I'm going to paint a poppy meadow, so I thought you might like to watch and maybe paint along. So today I'm going to be using a 12 inch by 10 inch canvas board. I've got a sword liner brush here to pull out some grass later. If you haven't got one of these, um, a rigger will be fine. Um, I'm also using a size 16 round brush. Um, it's quite a big brush, but it does come to a nice point so for fine detail. I've got a selection of acrylic paint, including ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, titanium white, and then several different shades of red and an orange, cadmium red, so on. Um, some kitchen roll. I'm going to scatter a little bit of gold powder at the end just for some highlights. If you don't have any of that, then glitter would be fine. Um, if you like it, if you don't like sparkle, then don't worry about that. Uh, then I've got two big pots of water and a Stay Wet palette. Okay, so I'm ready to start painting. I've squeezed all my paint out onto my palette. Um, I'm using a size 16 round brush. It's quite a big brush but it comes to a lovely point so you can get fine detail and I'm just going to dip that into some water just to dampen it and then with a bit of kitchen roll just going to take off the excess water then I'm going to start with the sky so I'm going to pick up a large amount of white and then a small amount of ultramarine blue Okay, so I'm just going to swirl the brush around the canvas basically. Um, I don't tend to mix colours on the palette because I find if you do that you get too much of a block colour whereas this way you're going to get more variations. I'm really just putting colour down where it's too dark, swirling it out. Acrylic paint does dry quickly, but if you pick up a lot of paint in one go, you'll find you'll have plenty of time to get the painting done. Okay, so that's a basic sky. I'm using this something called a Stay Wet palette, which has a liner paper which you moisten and piece of sort of like greaseproof paper really on the top and that will when you put the lid on it will make sure your paint stays workable for me sometimes up to a month if you don't have that then there are all sorts of other palettes available um, sometimes just to hold the paint really just tapping in some clouds I'm just trying not to get them too pointed The thing to remember is that the top part of the canvas is overhead and then the lower down you come the further into distance you go and so any clouds need to get smaller as you go away. The other thing is at the moment all we're working on is the sky so you will see that as being the main part and you'll focus just on that but as soon as we start putting the landscape in there the sky will become less important um, and we will be pulling out grasses anyway so a lot of it will be covered so don't stress about it too much just keep swirling it around picking up white now and again for the clouds until you're happy with it it's going to be a nice sunny day so a bit of blue sky not putting any greys in or anything because it's going to be a cheerful happy picture and I'm just pulling the middle of it down a little bit more okay I think that works fine. Okay, so now I'm going to put in the horizon. Things that are far away, as this part of the canvas board is, um, tend to be paler and very often blue or purple in tone. So I'm going to stick with the blue and just pull out a horizon. So I've just picked up some more white, a touch more blue. And I'm just going to put a horizon line in.
by it not mixing it on the canvas get more variation in the colour. Also I tend to go higher at the edges and lower in the middle. That keeps your eye in the composition um, and actually it's good not to go too symmetrical so we'll just pull a little bit out there. So I'm now going to start painting the more uh, landscape nearer to us. Um, I'm going to pick up some lemon yellow and French ultramarine and also some white and although we, we want green we don't want it too loud, too bright at this point so really I'm just carrying on working, putting in the next lot of hills put some little trees in if you wish and again any bits you don't like just keep working on them you can go back change things um, it works quite well just pushing up with the point to make some trees I'm always trying to think as though I was going for a walk so I'm trying to leave little gaps where I would want to go walking. That's it. And I'm still just bringing it forward, just getting stronger each time the brush goes across. I don't know if you know there's a lovely chap called Bob Ross and he used to paint, he used to have a series of programmes and he would always say it's your world, you can do what you like. And it's a happy place. It's a always nice. Okay, so I'm just working on it and you can see because I'm not mixing on the canvas I'm getting nice it's kind of painting itself getting nice darker areas and lighter areas. Some more paint getting darker again I haven't got, I haven't got any white this time. As you can see, I'm kind of making this part here where our path is going to go, and that's off centre, so it doesn't become too symmetrical. Okay, now I'm going to think about the path coming in to the picture, so I'm just going to start putting that in. I'm picking up some lemon yellow tiny tiny touch of blue because I want the path to be sunlit because obviously you want to walk in the sunshine so you'll find by the way you pull your brush strokes you can gesture how the land actually goes so by pulling it away like this you're implying that the, there's a, a slight rise and you can walk through that way and I'm just going to try and just blend that into the horizon like that. So we're going to walk from here across into the picture and then head off up into the hills. I can assure you there is a pub in there somewhere, about behind that tree there I believe. Lovely. So now I'm just going to clean off the brush before we start the next stage. So the next thing I'm going to do is start putting in some poppy, some colours. I like to work on a white board because I feel that that makes the colours underneath pop. Although a lot of acrylic paint is opaque, some, the trans, if it's transparent then you tend to dull the colours a little. So all I've really done, I've picked up one of my reds which I think is the paler one and I'm just, just putting in colour basically. A lot of this we will cut back down afterwards, but it's easier to cut round it than trying to colour in the white bits. So at this point I'm just putting in a band and the same over here. Isn't it lovely? Um, then I go for a slightly the more mid, mid colour and just starting to leave some gaps. Just 
put the colour down. We'll be cutting round these as well to make them more poppy shaped. But when you see a poppy meadow, you don't recognise individual poppies far away. It's just a it's just a mass of colour. Um, I tend to hold the handle a uh, brush like a hammer. It means you're more loose with it in that way. If you if you use it like a pen, then you get too hung up on the detail, whereas this way it makes you be more, more random. Let's get them slightly bigger towards the front here. I'm leaving a bit of a gap because we don't want to squash the poppies when we go for our walk, so we need to be able to get through them. Making them slightly more poppy shaped here, and also I'm making the paint a bit thicker towards the front as well. Get nice texture on there. I'm just going to put a touch of yellow in there as well now. Not yellow, orange of course. Sometimes it's hard to paint and talk at the same time. Okay, I'm going to wash the brush again. That's it, and then dry it off on the kitchen roll so it's not too damp, not too, too wet. Right, the mix will pick up a yellow and blue again, maybe just a tiny bit of mixing on the palette, and then I'm going to come back in and start filling in the white area. First I'm just going to pull the path up, that goes this way this time, so we're co coming into the picture. And then I'm really now just filling in the white spaces. Try to avoid the red as much as I can because once you start mixing that red with it, it will become muddy. Okay, I'm also going to start coming across some of the red as well. Just now at this point, colouring in the canvas basically. A bit more yellow, a bit more blue. A bit sort of stronger again, the colours towards the foreground. Because that's how you make the distance in a painting, by paler colours in the distance, stronger at the front. I'm just going to cut, put some darker colour in amongst this distant red. Just making some more poppies, individual poppies forms. Right, so now what I'm going to come back and work at the poppies in a little while, but before we do that, I want to put some grass in, just to join the foreground to the sky, otherwise it's very blocky, it's just stripes of colour otherwise. So I'm going to use a sword liner. If you don't have one of these, then a rigger is also fine. Um, I'm going to damp it very slightly. And then I need to use some paint which is not too solid so I need to just work on the consistency a little bit so that the paint is loose enough to pull through so I've added a little bit of water as you can see so it's it's slightly runny but it's not dripping and then I'm just going to pull up very delicately Add some grasses in, pick up some more paint. If you need to add a little more water, it just needs to be workable. 
you might find it, whoops that was too wet, see I nearly dripped off the end. You might prefer to try this out first. Yeah, it's too wet so that's a good example. You can just mop it up with a kitchen roll. You might want to try this first on a piece of paper before you go into your painting. pulling through and if you come a little bit further down as well some of the red paint will also pull out with you. I'm going to make a little, keep a gap where I'm going to walk. There's a little drip there look so just catch that before it goes too far. Just really swirling your paint through the palette. I've picked up a little bit of white there as well. Very, sometimes you miss all together but it's better that than going too heavy so it's little light flicks with the brush it can come the other way but that tends to to my mind not work quite so well I prefer to go upwards try not to make it too regimented this is nice because where the, the red paint was still wet it's pulled that up as well I'm going to go back through just, just some blue, a little touch more water just to get it at the right consistency. So you're looking for it to be sort of slightly runny but not drippy, if that's the best way of describing it. So I've quite like some yellow in there, so I'm going through the yellow paint as well. Pull some of that through, and where you've already got blue on the brush, you'll get different shades of green. I think that it's a bit heavy there, that blue grass there, so I'm just going to go through it, and then maybe the other way, just to break it up a little bit leave a little gap so we can see through there that's it you can add as much as you like keep working at it until you're happy with it I'm going to stop there so otherwise I could do this for hours and hours and you'll be bored by this so just put a little bit more where we're going to walk through okay so I've stopped the grass now I'm just going to add a few little white touches, little white daisies in effect because that will break up all this colour and make the colour seem brighter against the white. So I've just picked up some white on my brush I'm just going to do a few little dots here and there just to, uh, just stops it being too heavy a colour. It just makes the red sing out more somehow. If you want to put them on your grasses, you can. You can. You, it's your picture, so do whatever you wish. If you want to add flowers up there, feel free. I'm keeping it fairly simple for for this film because otherwise it will be awfully long. That's it. Lovely. Now, I want to start putting on some centres onto the poppies so we know what they actually are. So I picked up some black. Um, you can see, because although it's a huge brush, it's working very well with the fine detail. So I'm just going to choose some, some places for the poppies to be, with, with, to sort of start defining them. So towards the front, they'll obviously be bigger. So I'm just going to start putting in some centres. I might actually as well just take that off slightly, pick up some more red and just make some more definite poppy shapes at the front here. I'm 
tend to be sort of circular at the top and then a bigger circle at the bottom. The most beautiful flowers they are. You can never actually grow them when you want to. We've many times planted seeds and they, unless they're really happy, they won't appear. That's it. Just take the, clean the red off the brush and pick up the black again. So here there's, a, there's quite a large amount. You can break that up and give the illusion of that being several poppies by putting on more centres. I'm not going to put any along the back there because they, in real life, would be too far away for you to see the individual poppies. Just stick to the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to call that finished um, for a 20 minute painting um, that's worked really well. I'm really happy with that. You can carry on and work as much as you want. If you want to flick paint all across these grasses, you can do that. You just need the same sort of consistency as you've used to paint the grasses. All I would say is it will go everywhere and you need to protect the surrounding area and yourself if you're not wearing old clothes. Um, if I want to cover different parts of the pet and not like, focus where it goes on, then use pieces of paper to mask out areas that you don't want the paint to land on. I'm going to now shake on a little gold powder. While the paint is still wet, it will stick and you won't need to worry any more about it coming off. So where I can still see wet paint, I'm just going to shake some gold on there. That just gives it a little gleam. If you want to use a gloss medium over the top of it in certain areas to add some shine, you can do that. I never varnish my paintings, my acrylics, because I like the way there's a difference between matte and the shine and they don't need protection they just need a, a gloss the, the acrylic paint is very light fast if you've chosen artist's quality if you don't have gold and you want to add a little sparkle touch of glitter feel free just a gentle little shake and it will stick to the wet paint and if you don't like any sparkle or shine and don't want to do that then that's also perfectly fine Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed seeing me paint. If you have painted something yourself and you'd like to share it through my social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter and so on, then I'd really love to see them. I'm there as Julia Tanner Art. Thank you very much.